Hi, I'm Tim. Join me on this video as I discuss how to trim your radio control model airplane. Let's get to it. Trimming an airplane is part of your job as a pilot, whether it's radio control model airplanes or full-scale aircraft. We'll talk a little bit about both. But let's start first of all with what is the definition of trim for a model airplane. So from the dictionary, Trim is to keep or adjust the degree to which an aircraft can be maintained at a constant altitude without any control forces being present. So in a nutshell, when an airplane is trimmed, you should be able to take your hands off the controls, model airplane full scale. The plane should fly pretty much on its current path. It could be a climb, it could be level, a descent, but you take your hands off the control and it'll continue generally in that direction. Any airplane has three axes of flight. You can have the pitch axis controlled by elevator. You can have the roll axis controlled by ailerons. And you have the yaw axis controlled by rudder. Each one of these uh, control axes need to be trimmed for the model to, be, to fly correctly in a hands-off position. You'll find that this is a video on how to trim. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on the aerodynamics of it, but the way airplanes work for the yaw trim, which would be back and forth of the rudder, there's not too much of an input required. Same for the bank. However, the pitch with the elevator does require a lot of input from the pilot and adjustment through flight for a properly trimmed airplane. This is for a range of reasons because the um, pitch of an altitude is up for slow, you lower the nose to go faster, the center of gravity location can affect the trim, also power settings and configuration changes if you lower the gear and flaps. The bottom line is for a airplane, <clears throat> you can pretty much set the roll and yaw trim, but the pitch trim is going to be completely adjusted by the pilot through flight. It'll be a little bit different for our radio control model aircraft, but I want to discuss the full scale aircraft to understand how trim works. Then we'll go to how you can trim your RC model. Again, the reason we trim an airplane, whether it's full scale or a model, is just part of airmanship. Uh, trim is considered by the FAA as a secondary control. Uh, the primaries are elevator, rudder, and um, uh, ailerons. But trim is like a, a spoilers or flaps or secondary controls. So they're, they're a normal part of flight to complement the primary controls. You can fly an airplane out of trim, whether it's full scale or a model. The problem is you're gonna always be fighting the aircraft. If it's out of trim to go a little bit nose up, you'll constantly be holding that nose down trim. It's just not good airmanship to do that. You should trim out the model. It makes flying easier. You'll be more consistent, safer. If you can relax your grip on the controls, the plane doesn't vary from its altitude in the case of pitch trim. In line, with, in, in line with trim being a normal part of flying, we tend to adjust the trim all the time when we're flying full-scale aircraft. It could be for changes to the center of gravity, fuel could be burning down for commercial aircraft, passengers could be moving about inside the aircraft. It's a normal thing to be adjusting the trim for full-scale aircraft, less so for models, and I'll get into that when we discuss trimming your RC model airplane. For this video, I'm going to be discussing how to trim a basic RC model airplane. What I mean by basic is pretty much your standard Sunday flyer that you fly at the club field. So I'm going to call this the basic model. There are advanced 3D aerobatic uh, airplanes out there, obviously. Um, th those are a much more involved trim process for acrobatic flight because if you're flying knife edge, inverted, and so forth. What the aim of this video is, at the end of this video, I'll show you how to easily trim your airplane flight for one type of flying conditions, that is where you spend most of your time flying at about two thirds throttle, just cruising along through the sky. Once the airplane is trimmed for that, we can compensate for differences on the landing and takeoff portion. Let's take a moment now to talk about trim with full-scale aircraft. <clears throat> Normally, there's not a lot of uh, linkages or parallels from full-scale flying to radar control model airplanes. In the case of trim, there is a direct correlation. And by describing what happens if you can pretend that you're in the cockpit of a real airplane, 
it will give you a, a key understanding of trim that will help you as you're trying to figure out what's going on with your RC model airplane. As I mentioned, with the three axes of trim, the yaw and the roll are not too much of an impact on flying. Uh, however, the pitch, due to changes of airspeed, configuration, there is always the need to adjust the pitch trim for an airplane. Since about the late 1920s, every airplane built from uh, Piper Cubs to um, transport aircraft have a pitch trim built into the aircraft because the trim changes that much on the pitch of the aircraft. I'll show you a picture now of a trim wheel on a Cessna aircraft. This is just standard. You turn it down to raise the nose up. You um, raise the trim wheel to trim down. It's just part of your basic training. You'll set it for takeoff to have the proper trim. Because light aircraft uh, don't fly that fast, and I mentioned it's not that big a deal to trim the rudders and ailerons, frequently on light aircraft, there are no trim controls for the rudder or ailerons. There's actually a little metal tab. I'll show you a picture now. Or on the ground, if you feel the airplane pulling a little bit to the left, for example, on the rudder, you can just take this tab and on the ground literally bend it a little bit to the right to force the rudder over to counteract that, um, that yawing motion. And once that is trimmed, uh, even if the airspeed varies, it just doesn't have that much of an impact. On larger aircraft, uh, such as transport aircraft, you will have controls for all three trims. But again, these are largely set zero on the ground. <coughs> the times you may use them, for example, on the 777 with the rudder trim, if you lose an engine, you will put in some rudder trim to compensate for the um, asymmetric thrust of that situation. But generally speaking, it's just the pitch trim that you're concerned about. So continuing with the discussion of trim on full-scale aircraft, let's just have an example where you're flying in your airplane. Let's say it's a Cessna. You're at 80% power and you're going 100 miles an hour and the plane is completely trimmed out, what will happen is the controls will be very light because it's trimmed and pitch is what we can control. If you take your hands off the controls, the plane should maintain by and large a level flight attitude because it is a high wing trainer type of aircraft for a Cessna. The key thing that I want to uh, relay to you now, and this will go through the rest of the video, is trim is set for an airspeed. I repeat, when you trim an airplane, it is trimmed for an airspeed. So in the case I just described where your hands are off, the plane's flying straight and level, it is trimmed for 100 miles an hour. What will happen is, let's say you reduce the power from 80% to 50%, you're going to do a descent. As you reduce the power, clearly the airplane will start to lose altitude, the nose will drop, but because it's trimmed for 100 miles an hour, the nose will drop a little bit over and then as you go down at that lower power setting, the nose will go up and down until it hunts for the pitch setting that will give it 100 miles an hour. Again, you trim for airspeed. By the same token, if we back up to where we're on level flight at 80% power, we go to 100% power, the plane is going to start to climb. The nose will go up a little bit, down, it will eventually hunt for the pitch setting of the airplane that will give you 100 miles an hour in the climb of that full power setting. So we trim for airspeed full scale. Also with our RC models, we trim for airspeed. So when we describe how to trim for say two thirds throttle cruising flight, we will trim for that airspeed. If you fly at a lower or higher airspeed, the model will be a little bit out of trim, but we'll teach you how to compensate for that. One other point I wanna come back to on full scale airplanes that will apply to models is the importance of center of gravity. The proper center of gravity location is probably the most important thing we can do as modelers to make sure our RC models uh, fly correctly. Um, the only thing that can really change the CG of a model outside of you're doing some sort of cargo carrying or you have a, a heavy load of some sort is putting in a different battery or if the battery is not in correctly, it could shift back and forth. For full scale aircraft, there's a lot of other factors that can affect the center of gravity. As you're flying the airplane, it could be fuel burn, it could be passengers moving around, it could be uh, configuration changes. But with the center of gravity, just to show you how that can affect even a light aircraft, and, and I've done this before, let's say you're in a Cessna, you're at 100 miles an hour level, you're completely trimmed out, hands off, the plane's flying well. It's you and your passenger in the front seat. You can lean forward into that airplane as much as you can without bumping into the control surfaces. 
that will uh, the control c controls that will move the center of gravity a little bit forward you'll actually see the plane start to descend from that minor change of the center of gravity so again the center of gravity is very important if you find one of your radio control models is out of trim um, do double check the center of gravity that would be the first thing i'd check before we start retrimming So let's go back to trimming your radio control model airplane. The first thing we need to do is on the ground in your shop to check the airplane before we take it up to trim it because it's very important that the airplane is in good flying shape before we go up into the air. So the center of gravity I've harped on, make sure the center of gravity is correct. For RC models, typically the battery has to be in place and just hold, and just hold it at the balancing point. The next thing you need to do, this is from my Quick Oats um, airplane, I'll put the um, link in the description, is the wing and control surfaces have to be completely warp free. Uh, if there's any warps, you can sight it, put it onto a flat surface. The warps have to be removed. If there is a warp in the wing, the tail surfaces, vertical or horizontal, that will affect the flight characteristics on airspeed. It'll be impossible to maintain its trim because it is not warped. Everything has to be warp free to take it off with the center of gravity in place. The other thing that's very important for trimming is there has to be what I call tight controls. You can't have any slop in the controls. That means where the controls are connected to the servo and very importantly to the control horns, you need a, the right size hole to the control rods because if you can move these control surfaces with slop, it's going to be almost impossible to get a consistent trim on your airplane. The other thing that is important is the motor mounting um, for a bunch of reasons. When we fly our RC model aircraft, the models fly best when the engine has a slight degree of down thrust and right thrust. It has to do with the rotation of the propeller and aerodynamics on the wing. How much of a right and down thrust varies between models. Some very high performance aerobatic models may have no right or down thrust depending on the thrust lines and so forth. Generally speaking, they say three degrees on the plans, uh, two to three degrees. What is two to three degrees? I don't know. What I do is I generally one washer width of the right thrust and a washer down thrust when I mount it seems to work well for everyday flying. You notice also on this Quickos model, which is from Steven Zero, a very well designed kit, there is a fair amount of down thrust. You can see with the firewall right here. Again, due to the large wing, the high wing design of this old timer type of model, we need that much down thrust. Again, the important point is if you don't build a lot of models, if you fly a lot of almost ready to fly, ready to fly is out of a box, you see some down thrust, right thrust, that's okay. That's part of the model design process. So let's discuss how to trim your RC model airplane just for a basic Sunday flyer. As we discussed previously, make sure the plane is a good flying order, no warps, the center of gravity, tight control uh, hookups, the proper right down thrust. So all that has to be a given. What will happen is on the transmitter, we have what are called the trim tab settings, these right here. So when the servos are set to be neutral, with the, uh, in this case, the elevator and rudder. This is neutral right here. If we, this is up rudder, uh, elevator, down elevator. If we move this, this is up. If we move this down, you can see the elevator going up slightly, and that is how the model trims itself. So up trim, down trim, and similarly left and right with the rudder, this three um, channel model. Also, as we move these trims, most transmitters will have an electronic indication here. You can see the little uh, square is down, and as we push the trim back down, you can see it going to neutral. That's just an indicator where your trims are set. The indication is important because once you have the trim set for a given model, say you, you have it three or four units down, when you turn on the model, you want to make sure you see that down, that the trim is set as you think it should be set. Now, to do the trimming in the air, what will happen is you take off the model, a model flight, whenever it is you want to trim it, and you take your hands off the controls and watch, watch what the model does. 
If the model goes down, you're going to want to trim it up slightly. If it turns to the left, you want to trim it to the right with this trim right here. And then um, for a three channel model, and if it was a four channel, the rudder would be here, ailerons would be here. But what will happen is when you're flying it along, as I mentioned before, you trim for airspeed. So you want to trim your models for a given airspeed. For our models, because we're not in the cockpit, the best indication of airspeed is a throttle setting. If you fly most of your flights, about two thirds throttle in cruising flight going around, set that airspeed, have the model in front of you at a low enough altitude to see it, take your hands off the control, just see what the airplane does and then trim to get it back to level flight. But here's an important point for these trim flights. It can be a lot going on when you're looking at a model, it's not in trim, you have to find the control settings and adjust it. The easiest way to handle this situation is to have a buddy, a second person, as you're flying it. You're the pilot, you take your hands off the controls, you say it's descending slightly, you then level it off with the controls. Your friend then can adjust the trim tabs for you so you can keep your eyes on the model, you're not concentrated on that, pre-brief say two to three clicks up, person does that. You see how the trim goes, so you can go back and forth to get the trim set so that when you take your hands off the controls, the model by and large will fly straight and level uh, without any need for control input. One other point I want to emphasize when you're doing your trim flights with your model, be certain that it's as calm a day as possible. If there's a lot of turbulence, the plane's bouncing around or it's windy, you're not going to be able to see what the plane does when its controls off because you'd be uh, fighting the turbulence at the whole time. So in the morning, evening, very smooth, calm air, that's when you want to do your trim test flights. As I mentioned with the discussion of full-scale aircraft, you trim for airspeed. So in the case of this trim demonstration, we've trimmed at an airspeed, say it's 30 miles an hour at your two-thirds throttle setting. When you change the speed, for example, when you speed up to do a loop or something, or more importantly, we're always going to reduce our speed to land, the model will be out of trim. Full-scale aircraft, you instinctively adjust the trim to release control forces. It's just part of your landing checklist. With models, we're not inside the cockpit. We can't feel the control forces, really. It's not practical to change the trim of an RC model for landings. What we do is we simply add controls to keep it at whatever pitch setting we want for landing and accept the fact that it will be out of trim, a small amount for the models as we land. That's just the nature of rate of control flying. But the key thing is to try to get your model completely trimmed while you do your majority of your flying in cruise flight. There is one item that computer radios have given us that can help with the trim. I would like to discuss this now. This is the function of sub-trim. Um, every computer radio has a sub-trim function. And the idea of the sub-trim is, let's say your model, you trim it so the elevator is just slightly up to maintain level flight for this trim discussion. And the indicator on your transmitter will show slightly up. What you could do with a sub-trim is that you can dial in that trim setting so that you can re um, change your setting back to zero. So let me show that to you briefly, what the sub-trim looks like, and then I'll, I'll give you my thoughts on it. So this is the Spectrum DX6, and um, what I'll do is I'll press this once. We go into the function menu, roll the scroll wheel, press the servo setup, and what we have here is travel. We click that once, and there is the sub-trim menu. We click that, and what can happen is we can go, in our case, to elevator, click on that, and we can adjust it up or down to zero out the trim. And then once that is done, we go back to the list, and we can neutralize the elevator um, trim setting there, and we can go fly. So personally, I don't use sub-trim. There, there may be acrobatic pilots that use it all the time. I think it's a little bit more um, hassle than it's worth. What I do is on my models, I'll have an adjustment point somewhere. In this case, the set screw with the Dubro servo keeper. I can just uh, release that screw, adjust the elevator in and out with a control rod to set it to where I want, looking at the control here, and then setting the um, servos back to zero if I want to do that. So I prefer to do my servo adjustments either with a threaded clevis at the back, the set screw here, and I don't mess around with the sub-trims. 
just by technique. If you're comfortable using the subtrims, by all means, use the subtrims. One of the wonderful things about having um, computer memories is 250 models we can store in the DX6. Uh, it varies by transmitters. Each model that we store in the memory has a different set of trim settings. So that trim setting with, that's binded to that receiver, it knows what the trim settings are. So when you switch from model to model, the trims are automatically set when you go to that new model. The other thing to keep in mind for people that are flying ARFs, ready to fly models, the models will probably be in pretty good shape for trim out of the box, but it's still always a very good idea to check for any warps or any damage to the controls. Make sure your control surfaces are tight, there's no slop, that they're correctly connected, there's no loose servos, and of course your battery is in the right position for the center of gravity. So it's still important to pre-flight, and but the almost ready to fly model should fly pretty well, but just keep in fact, uh, keep in mind that even if they're right out of the box perfectly, there's little variations in manufacturing, you'll still need to trim them somewhere on their initial flights. There's nothing wrong with the model, it's just the way that airplanes work in the world of RC. Another thing you'll find is you fly radio control models, some models just trim better than other models. It's just, it's just the nature of the beast. I have found that when you have a, a tractor set up with a propeller where the propeller is pulling the airplane, that tends to be a more stable uh, airplane for trim settings. There are other models, if you fly 3D, that will be very neutral stability. They'll have different trim characteristics. Other airplanes are just about impossible to trim. And a good example is this uh, foam board F-22. A link to the plans and descriptions, uh, the, a link to the plans and the build of this is in the description. What will happen is this line right here is the center of gravity, so it's a pretty far back. And the motor back here is close to the center of gravity and it and the is controlled by elevons. What happens instead of the propeller pulling this through the air, it's being pushed very close to the CG. You just see the nose is continually hunting for the right pitch setting. It's a fighter that's the way it's designed for um, agility. But with this one, I don't worry about it too much. I can play with it a lot, but to keep this thing trimmed out with this very powerful motor uh, pushing against the center of gravity, airflow right over the tails, it's gonna be a hard thing to get this thing trimmed out. Just again, the nature of this airplane. I understand this before I take off, so I don't worry too much about it keeping it perfectly in trim. The F-22 flies very well. There's uh, plans and uh, a video in the description if you want to build one from 3 6 inch foam board. But you can see the nose is kind of hunting around all the time as I'm flying. You're on the sticks. It flies well. It is maneuverable. I'm not sure this model will ever trim out the way a normal trainer will just for hands-off flight. Thank you for joining me in this video. As I mentioned, the important thing to take away from trim is a normal pilot activity. You can trim also with our RC models very easily for roll or yaw because we have the control of the servos. And the key thing is the trim is set for an airspeed. Once we are trimmed for a given airspeed, that's a good trim as we change airspeed. Uh, that would be a little bit out of trim with models. We just go ahead and compensate with that on our controls. By understanding trim and trimming models, so remember the trim can vary over time. Models can age. You might have a accident where you did a repair on the wing. The incidence might be off a little bit, a warp might have creeped in. If you're flying your model, you notice all of a sudden it's out of trim, that might alert you to take a look. Maybe something is not quite right or out of alignment. But it is okay to adjust the trim as models age. That's a normal part of the flying process and um, just make you a better pilot and more comfortable flying your RC model airplane. So thank you for joining me in this video and look forward to seeing you on future videos.